Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the Pfizer Postdoc Fellowship. And essentially, as many of you may know, Pfizer is a very big and very important pharmaceutical company. And essentially, the interesting thing is that Pfizer gives out postdoctoral fellowships, and these are especially of interest to people who are in the health sciences, the medical sciences, pharmaceuticals, genomics, bioinformatics, and so on. So let's look at some of the details about this fellowship and how you can get them. So essentially, as I mentioned before, Pfizer makes many medicines and one of its aim is to make people more healthy, to lead longer lives. So this is the primary aim of the company. Now, this fellowship is known as the Pfizer Worldwide Research, Development and Medical Postdoctoral Training Program. That's a lot of words, so we can call it the Pfizer WRDM Postdoctoral Training Program, where WRDM stands for Worldwide Research, Development and Medical. So essentially, this is a global program and a variety of Pfizer centers around the world may give you this program. So now what's the aim of this program? So essentially you need to conduct some groundbreaking research and this is in the fields of disease biology, drug delivery, mechanisms of action and computation and informatics. So remember nowadays there is a synergy between the fields of information technology, between the fields of data science and the fields of biology and so a lot of the new medicines or drugs are actually being discovered by using various complex technologies involving computation and so on. So these are some things to keep in mind that that uh, new direction of research. Now the general tenure or average tenure of this fellowship is two to four years and the salary is about $72,000 a year according to Glassdoor. So now what are the interesting things about this postdoc fellowship, I would say the first thing is that this research program is monitored by a postdoctoral governance team and the aim of this team is to maximize the productivity of the particular postdoc. So this governance team essentially serves to transition this person who is essentially a PhD, a graduate student to a mindset which is much more favorable to company and industrial way of thinking because remember when you are a person in a university, your objective is to publish papers, whereas whenever you are working in the private sector, the aim which you have is actually to bring out some products which will bring revenue and therefore profits to the company. So essentially one of the big changes as far as company life is concerned is to realize that there is a market out there, there is a customer out there, your customers are no longer the journals. So that's the transition which is done by this postdoctoral governance team. Now, essentially what happens is that each fellow also gets a scientific committee. So they will essentially select this scientific committee of internal and external experts. And these people are going to help to maximize the training and mentorship which the postdoc gets during this phase. So this essentially consists of some people who are in the company. These may be experts in that particular field and there may be some people outside the company in universities or national labs or some different companies also. So essentially the aim here is to have a number of people to essentially mentor the postdoc. Remember the postdoc is not being hired to do some routine job. If you want to get routine jobs done you can just hire somebody out of college. But essentially when you are hiring a person to do a postdoc you really value the high level of knowledge and skill this person brings to the table. So essentially what happens is that this person has done a PhD in an area which is extremely attractive to the company concerned here which is Pfizer and therefore Pfizer wants to groom this person very well so that he or she can become a member of the company down the road. So one of the things is that such people do require a lot of mentorship and a lot of training and so on so this committee is going to help you in that growth path. Now essentially you are going to have both on and off site training possibilities so there are of course various internal forums which are there in terms of seminars, group discussions and so on and also you may get funding to go to some conferences and so on. So again you have to discuss with your supervisor here and also discuss with some of the members of this committee 
as to what are the best options for you now one of the important things in this kind of postdoc is to use the research to find practical medicines for all ages and geographies. So essentially the keyword here is impact. You want to find medicines which have a lot of impact and that's something to keep your mind on and this is what Pfizer tries to do is to maximize the impact which you have. And 40 of this WRDM postdoctoral fellowships are given out each year. They are given out uh, at more than a dozen of the company sites. So there are a lot of fellowships out there. They pay very well, like I mentioned before, over $70,000 a year. And the tenure is pretty large, two to four years. So it's very likely that you will gain a lot of experience and you may get a good job at Pfizer at the end of this prog process, or you may get a good job in some other pharmaceutical companies. Remember, pharmaceutical companies are highly profitable. So you may get a high paying postdoc here later also. So essentially, how do you get this job? You essentially go to the Pfizer web page and then go to the career tab. And here you search for the word postdoctoral. So when I search here, I got several jobs, for example, in RNA medicines, biocatalysis, computational chemistry, protein development, vaccine research and development, and so on. So you will find a large number of postdocs out here and you can apply for these postdoctoral positions. Again, remember the basic requirement for the postdoc situation here is that you have a PhD or you are very near the end of the PhD and also you have a number of good journal publications. You are from a reasonably good university and you of course may need letter of references from your PhD supervisor and some more people down the road. So always keep this in mind that if you are a postdoc, especially in the field of health sciences and pharmaceuticals, there are a lot of jobs out there which are postdoc jobs in the industry and therefore you can apply for these jobs and you can transition from the academic sector to the corporate sector. So it is not like you have to continue in the university sector. You can always move from the, comp the university sector to the company sector and earn much more money and probably have less competition in terms of job also because there are only so many universities out there and the professors don't retire. They essentially have no retirement age. So there are not a lot of vacancies as far as academia is concerned, but in the company world, there are a lot of possibilities. People do retire every now and then. And also small companies keep coming up. So a lot of the people who work in companies such as Pfizer and such large companies go and become VPs or CEOs at some small company. So what happens is they continuously have a movement of people up. They have people leaving the companies and so they always have room for new people. That's very difficult in a university setting where people are typically hired just to replenish whoever is already there. That's the reason the assistant professors are hired because some professor is retiring and that happens only very infrequently nowadays. So that was my take on the Pfizer postdoctoral program. It's a good program. You can take advantage of it and stay tuned to my channel for more such videos. I will see you sometime soon. See you then.